giving up, but I'm not giving in. I'm holding on. You better. And rolling in the dust and doing some of those things they did. I remember they used to kind of froth at the mountain. They'd bring toilet paper in there when they, they was telling.
Good morning. If you have parked your vehicle alongside on the outside, we're asking you to put it on the church compound or bring it a bit closer because it's not safe to be so far. Parking spaces are also on the inside of the front of the churchyard. So if you could just move your vehicle and take it on the inside or bring it closer to the church compound. together for the one, the only Bishop Carlton Pearson. Somebody said it's gonna be all right after a while. Said it'll make more sense later. Come on, said all things work together for good to them that love God and those who are called according to His purpose. There was a little old lady, little old church mother named Mother Sherman. She was what we call a district missionary. She was the church mother of our church, the Jackson Memorial Church of God in Christ in San Diego, California. She went to heaven when she was 101, I think. And she was a, such a sweet little darling. She was about four. She looked like she was about four, three. And, uh, but a powerful preaching woman. 
And when I was a little boy, she used to say to me, she heard I was saved. I got saved when I was about four or five years old. And they heard about this little Pearson boy that was saved. And she'd always come to me and said, son, you yet holding on? And I said, yes, ma'am, I'm yet holding on. She said, well, keep on keeping on it, baby. <laughs> she said that all the time. Every time I said, you yet holding on, them old missionaries always gonna th thought she's going to backslide between Sundays, you know. <laughs> you yet holding on? And I said, yes, ma'am. She said, well, keep on holding on, baby. And she'd give me a nickel. And then when I get a little older, she gave me a dime. You yet holding on? I said, yes, Mother Sherman, I'm yet holding on. You keep on keeping on, baby. She gave me a quarter. By the time I got ready to go to college, she was up to a dollar. <laughs> I remember I came back from my freshman college year here at Oral Roberts University, and I saw Mother Sherman. She said, baby, you yet holding on? I said, yes, ma'am, I'm yet holding on. She said, well, you keep on keeping on then, baby. She never did get above a dollar. She stayed at that dollar. <laughs>
God is my So we're getting ready to start the service, so we will close the casket now and then have the processional. Thank you.
Let, let us stand, please. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, but thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. But thou preparest a tear before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise and worship team will continue in worship as we lift up the name of the Lord. Good morning. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Lord. We bless your name, Jesus. Though we grieve, mighty God, though we mourn today, Lord, we know that you are with us. We know that your peace is with us. We know that your strength and your comfort is with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some sweet day, I'm going away. I'm going to leave this world. To roam some sweet day when life is over, some sweet day I'm going away. Some sweet day, some sweet day I'm going away. I'm gonna leave.
before the Lord at this moment as we think on the reason why we are here let us just look to the Lord in prayer father we just want to thank you for this moment we want to thank you for life almighty God father we just want to bless your name that we are able to lift up our voices unto you mighty God and that we can look to the hills from whence cometh our help because indeed our help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth Mighty God, at this moment, we want to place your people before you, God. Hearts are broken, tears are flowing, but God, you understand. And so we put them before your awesome presence this morning, God. And we ask you to lay your hands upon them. Father, we just want to put this service in your hands, God, that you lead and you direct that everything will be done to your glory and to your honor, God. And at the end of it all, your name, God, must and will be glorified. And so, God, at this moment, we ask you to take control, Lord. Take control, Heavenly Father, that as we come into the sanctuary this morning, be mindful of the reason, God, that indeed you are faithful, Jesus, even as they mourn, you are still a faithful God. And we just want to bless your name this morning, God. So we ask you, Lord, to hover over this place like never before. Touch his person like never before, Almighty God. And as we put today's service in your hand, God, we pray that you will lead and direct as we say thank you in no other name but the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We will turn in our hymns, or we'll turn to our program as we sing the hymn, Blessed Assurance. i 
but we shall and must praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord again. Praise, praise the, Lord. the Lord. Amen. Before we continue, my name is Laurie Reed, and I'm your moderator for today. And we express our condolences to the families of those who are grieving the loss of their loved one. Now we're going to have the first reading, which will be taken from Psalm 91, verses 1 to 10, which will be read by Ruth Marie Ricketts, cousin, and Shaquille Thompson, school friend. Good afternoon. All right, so the scripture reading will be taken from Psalms 90, from verse 1 to 10. And it reads thus, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and say it, Return, ye children of men, for a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it passed, as, as watch in the night. Thou carriest them away with a flood, they are as asleep, as asleep. In the morning they are like a grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening it cut down and withereth. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thine, and by thy wrath we are troubled. Thou set our highest before thee, our secret sins, in light of thy countenance. For all our pass away in thy wrath, we spend our ears as tale, as stone. Night and last, the days of our years are three score years, and ten. And if by reasons of strength, by thy four, 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 sorry, four score years, yet is strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is, for it is soon cut off and fly away. Here in the top portion of God's holy word, we honor it by saying, thanks be to God. Amen. Now we'll be going into our first set of tributes. And the first one is Shelly and Johnson and Company. It's a musical item. Then the second tribute will be Longport Aviation Security. And the third is, is Alicia Palmer, which is also a musical item. And we come in that order, please. So Shelly and Johnson and Company will come now. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Before we begin, just want to say these few things. M, I, this is how we saw Maya. M, we saw, her, we saw her as Maya Angelou, which is a great poet, American poet and civil activist. O, optimistic. She was very positive to me and my family. Y, youthful, A, ambitious ambitious and attract attractive I'm very nervous I'm sorry attractive 
She was very intelligent, beautiful, smart, respectful, and was always smiling. She was our neighbor and our niece, not by blood, but by love. She was always listening to gospel music and soul's music, and we love to hear her singing next door. Praise God, and we will miss her. Praise the Lord. You may feel down and feel like God has somehow forgotten that you are faced with circumstances you can't get through. Right now it seems that there's no way out and you're going under. God's proven time and time again He'll take care of you. Yeah. 
Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Catherine Spear, and I wear the hat of the Human Resources Manager for Longport Aviation Security, and that is the work family of Moya. Right now, we would like to share our tribute to this beautiful, beautiful soul. From Moya Longport Aviation family to yours, our tribute. Very sweet, humble, yet free-spirited young lady. She was always well attired and looking lovely and neat for work. She was bright-eyed throughout the whole day. Everyone knew that she was a very jovial and enjoyable person to be around. Her laugh, she was always giving jokes and that laughter. She wanted to make everybody happy. Jovial jokes, just that sweet, sweet young lady. The time was short that we knew her, but her spirit was a light. She would always be around the lounge with that bright smile. Always willing to give that extra time that she had to make everyone happy. Always willing to learn. And with that knowledge, she was willing to help others. Moya, you will remain, your spirits will remain with us. Our poem for Moya. Though her smile is forever gone, and her hand we cannot touch, we still have so many memories of the one we loved so much. Her memory is now our keepsake, with which we'll never part. God has Moya in his keeping. We have her in our hearts, sadly missed but never forgotten. Take heart. Take heart. God is with you. He'll never leave you. She's in a better place, and her spirit remains in our heart. God bless you. Good evening, everybody. So my sister is on the phone. She's going to be late. She's Maya's friend. And I'm singing on behalf of her and my mom. I hear a sound of a mighty rushing wind. And it closed now. That it's ever been I can almost hear the trumpet As he says, son, go get my children As the midnight cry We will be gone 
we know when Jesus steps out on the cloud to call his children the dead in Christ shall coming to us to pray for the offering as we get ready to collect and the ushers will wait on us and we'll be singing the hymn the Lord's my shepherd to the tune of the happy wanderer Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, you are wonderful. You are gracious. You are holy. You are righteous. And so we honor you for whom you are. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Lord, we cannot ascribe enough unto you great God. Lord, we thank you for this funeral service and we thank you for your presence with us. God, realize that the hearts of your people are broken even now, but we thank you that you're pouring oil on their wounds that will help them to cope. We give you thanks for that, Lord. And God, in this hour, your people come to worship you with their offering. God, we pray you bless the hands and the heart and the lives of those who give an offering today and likewise to those who do not have to give. Even so, bless them, Lord. We pray a very special blessing upon the offering and the purpose for which it is collected. God, we pray that it will be used to the glory and to the honor of your holy name. We ask these mercies in Jesus' name. Amen.
on to the second set of tributes, and each tribute is three minutes. So we'll now go to the Waterford High School, Miss Rena Long's musical item and remembrance from Miss Fiona Harris, family friend, and they'll come in that order, please. Thanks. You may come now, please. Good morning and may God bless you always. My name is Miss Scott and I'm here to represent Waterford High School. This is the school that Moya got her secondary education and which she was a vibrant member of. I didn't get to say goodbye. It repeats inside my head. It fills my heart with pain and my soul with dread. I never said the final words. It isn't about the final words that were said or spoken. It is about the love that was expressed, that not even death has broken. Maya Christina Shantilope. I first met Maya in grade eight. I had her in class. She was a small bundle of fire never afraid to express herself. She did well in class. Grade nine here came about and they became my entire set. She was placed in my care. It was then that a greater bond was developed with Chantilope, as I would often call her. If only one student was turning up for a devotion, it would be Chantilope. In grade nine, Moya's personality shined bright like a diamond. Moya was a no-nonsense student. If something went wrong, whether in the class or on the grade nine block, I can almost hear her saying, Una talk fast, cause me not take no punishment for nobody. This would serve as a warning to anyone that was in the wrong, because I can assure you, Maya was not afraid to name the perpetrator. Maya was kind and a loving student. It was in grade nine that I noticed her love for food. If you wanted to see Maya miserable, make lunchtime come and she's still in a class. Or better yet, when she went to get her lunch, make the party call. Or Miss Christian only give her one piece of meat. I would sure hear of it. She was kind. She was tender hearted. And often she would share her lunch with her classmates. I would often ask, Maya, every day you eat food and you not get fat. She would often respond, Miss, you're blind. You not see how my fat. To which she would twirl and burst out in laughter. She loved netball, so much so that she became a part, part of the school's netball team. She was a great player and gave her all for every game. September 2019, Maya was again in my care. She was now a young lady in grade 11. Maya was always neatly attired. Her uniform was neat, clean, and well ironed. And her hair, Lord, how it always come nice. That year, as we developed the mantra, I am a promise, there were no truer words because Maya was indeed a promise. It was in that year that I experienced loss. There were days that I would cry and Maya would come and sit beside me and say, Miss, you are all right. Me know you're sad, but you will be okay. The love in her shined. She would check in on me often, popping up just to see if I was okay. Maya had such great ambition. She wanted to become a nurse. She was a diligent, hardworking, dedicated, and smart young lady. The grade 11 year was cut short by Corona. But let me tell you about the graduation day photograph. She was beautiful. I jokingly said to her, look what look a soap and water can do for you. 
she burst out laughing. I said, Miss, what are we here? You don't have no manners. I dressed her in her cap and gown. She glowed. She was just beautiful. Moya left school, but she was one that physically left, but was still mine. We spoke often, just a check-in. One of her recent conversations was of job hunting. We randomly check in on each other. I remembered when she did her hair in the blue for her birthday, and I saw it and I messaged her. And I said, I like that one. She said, yes, miss, we are going to school. Our last conversation was when a fellow student died. She called to tell me. In that same breath, we spoke about work and every other little thing about life. I encouraged her to continue doing her best and to make her mother proud. What a lovely young woman. Maya was the type of student that, as a teacher, we always hope and pray for. Into the freedom of wind and sunshine, we let you go. Into dance with the stars and planets, we let you go. Into the wind's breath and the hands of the star maker, we let you go. We love you. We miss you. We want you to be happy. Go safely. Go dancing. Go running home. We cannot lord your purpose see, but all is well that is done by you. Sleep well, baby girl, until we meet again. All, I greet you well. I believe this is the hardest task I've ever had to do. I don't know how well I can do it, but I will try. No parent should ever have to walk this lonely and painful road. The death of one's child is just too heavy a load. The remembrance for the late Moya Chantelope. Moya was known by those close to her as kind, warm, good humored, friendly, but solitary at times. She was reserved and self effacing, but forthright when she thought she needed to be. She was an excellent bubbler, who mastered too well how to jive her derriere. She had a great appreciation for different genres of music, with gospel and reggae dancehall being her absolute favorites, each applicable in its own time. Like a true African, music was in her bones. It made her dreaded house chores easier as the rhythm and basses throbbed through the house and she glided, swayed, rocked, and bounced to their impulses. Moya was a good academic student who had great aspirations to measure up to or outdo her older sister, Poochie. Poochie is now, by the way, a private in the JDF. She knew her limitations and understood that she wasn't the sole repository of all knowledge. She often reached out for help, clarity, and explanation in areas of uncertainty and obscurity. This certainly paid off, as she was successful in several CXC subjects at the end of her high school years. Her relationship with her mother was pretty typical. She thought her mother was just too miserable and would complain bitterly to Pucci about your mother. She was very annoyed that her mother would tell all her business to her dear confidant, Jadine. And I'll, I'll give one of those um, examples. Pucci, 
Listen to this. Me can't take your mother, you know. She led me thousand dollars for go look for one work, right? Them take too long and me did hungry. So me go buy something for eat and me end up reach home. Your mother start cost me. Say she want back her money. Pucci. Me go look back her money and gear, you know. I remember, me not talk back to her. Everything she run gone tell Jadina and fret them. Needless to say, Shaki walked in on that conversation. Who she would remind Maya that a year mother too. But she would laugh and lament. We just can't take her sometimes. And by the way, Shaki remember one of the things she never liked was you wearing her slippers. Don't start now. And her bed is still a no-no. She hated that too. As any other child would see his or her mother, Moya saw hers as a nurturer and provider. She knew the exact strings to pull to get favors from her mother. I'm sure Shaki knew that she was being played, but she got played over and over by her child. Very typical of a mother. She had aspirations. She had dreams. She understood the sacrifices made to afford her the quality of life that she had, and she wanted to give back. She spoke oftentimes of her dream of making her mother comfortable, though she would have preferred to have lived with her sister Poochie and brother Andre in their own shared home. The love for her siblings was undeniable. She was very conscionable. And coming from a very humble background, she wanted to relieve her mother of the financial responsibility of, get, of her higher, higher level education. So she ventured out into the workforce and joined the team at Longport Aviation Jamaica Limited. And I'll just share with you that not so long after her death, her mother got a call from an organization with whom she had an interview. She was successful and was being offered a position in that organization. For quite some time, her aunt Camille was her personal hairdresser. Camille and Moya used their usual Sunday evening appointment to bond. She also lived with Camille for some time. They developed a bond and love unbreakable, even after death. She was many things to many persons. To Danelia, her cash cow. To Jade, her ride and die with whom she had Two frequent quarrels. Jamisha, her wash mate, whom she challenged every single weekend for the first wash. To her aunt Kian, her chatting parry. Her friends, the loyalist, a sister from another mother, the giver, the mother hen, and an awesome friend. To others, the baddest hairdresser around that she had a dream of one day becoming. But to her parents, Shaki and Romy, she was just their baby girl. The universe has a way of communicating with and preparing us. The Sunday before she died, she shared a light but memorable moment with her sister and mother, all three lying in the bed together. Poochie reminded her that she loved her, and we mourned that. I tree you know some love make you go and say no. She laughed and replied, I love no to man. A mere four days prior to her passing, she posted pictures of her siblings, parents, and other family members. She referred to her mother as her joy and pain and expressed immense love for her. She reminded her father, sister, aunts, how much she loved them. She openly expressed the love for her brother Andre and asked him to forgive her as she had forgiven him. So don't think of her as gone away. Her journey has just begun. Life holds many facets. This earth isn't the only one. Just think of her as resting from the sorrows and tears in a place of warmth and comfort where there are no days nor years. Think how, must, how she must be wishing that we could know today that nothing but our sadness can really pass away.
and think of her as living in the hearts of those she touched. For nothing love is ever lost. And she loved you, 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 all of us very much. I thank you. Praise God somebody. Praise God somebody. Amen. What's the highest praise? One more time. Why I always say, um, Renee, you know, say after sing I'm a wedding. Look at me I sing. I say you have to sit down my wedding. I'm going to tell her, I say, you have money for pay me? I say, I'm going to do a DVD singing in Amaya. I sing for a living. You have money for pay me? I just say, I'm going to pay you, man. Look why I'm singing now. Like a ship. Sailing out on a trip so rough. Thank you. 
the storm so we will continue with the tributes as we move on to Troy James family friend and after that we will have this con reading from Ecclesiastes 12 verse 1 to 5 by Miss Jada Thompson cousin we will move in that order right now yes, God. Bless God. Bless God. Can we, can we, can we ask that the viewing be later? Let's proceed with the service. Let's proceed with the service. Bless God. Bless God. Bless God. Bless God. Bless God. Bless God, bless God, bless God. Bless God, bless God, bless God. Bless God. Bless God. Bless God, bless God, bless God. Bless God. God. Glory to God. God we Excuse from the cast to at about now. We can do that after. Please. Please. 
Process goes from the cast take and let the funeral service can go on. Please. Please. Please, please. Yeah, please, please. Oh God. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Good. Glory to God. Just mourn and get back to life. Just mourn and get back to life. God, we belong with men. But I'm here.
Good afternoon. I will be reading verses 1 to 5, taken from Ecclesiastes. And it reads, Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh. When thou shalt say, I, I have no pleasure in them, while the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened nor the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall bow themselves and the grinders cease because they are few and those that look out of the windows be darkened. And the door shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low and ye shall rise up at the voice of the bird and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Also, when they shall be afraid of that which is I, and fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall be fail, because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets. This is the word of the Lord. We'll now ask Miss Peter Gay Williams' family friend to come with the eulogy. And after the eulogy, our pastor will come with the message. Our pastor is Reverend Courtney Gordon, a pastor for over 20 years at this church. One of his mantra is that loves people more than things. I will repeat, I'll repeat that again, love people more than things. So after the eulogy, then our pastor will come to us with the word for today. Come, Miss Williams. All protocols observed. I stand before you today tasked with eulogizing Moya Christina Chantelope. And although it is indeed a melancholic moment for me, my heart is also filled with pride to be able to speak on such a beautiful life that was indeed well lived. I must also tell you that this will be a eulogy with a difference. And the kind of life that Moya lived and the kind of person that she was, as I'm sure that all who knew her or interacted with her can attest to. We could have no choice but to send her home in fine style. The eulogy will be infused with three original poems which I wrote in dedication to Moya and also the family, and also an original song which emerged from the numerous emotions which I encountered when I was in the process of doing theology, so it forms a part of my delivery. The first poem. You plant a seed and watch it as it blossoms and it blooms. In sunlight, anchored, grounded, firm, a flower forms there soon, and dances with the vibrant wind, starts fading with the moon, and withers in the evening time, her petals gone too soon. Moya Christina Chantelope was ushered in with the new year on the 1st of January. She enjoyed watching cartoons and being on her phone undisturbed. She had a serious disposition and would hardly laugh. She would only laugh or smile with you if she knew you very well and if you sat well with her spirit, which she would often post to her social media page stating, I just saw Miss Tia. She was very neat and clean and took pride in her dressing. Her whole ensemble had to be on fleek from the hair to the makeup to the uniform when she was going to school or whatever attire applied to the respective occasion. Not even a thread could be out of place. Education. 
She enrolled in the Rehoboth Basic School at age three, where she spent two years. Subsequent to this, she attended the Newland Basic School, where she finished her education at the basic level. After this, she moved on to the Saltborough Primary School, where she spent six years until she passed for Waterford High School. Maya lived with her father until she was three years old when she went to live with her aunt for two years, after which she went back to live with her father. After graduating from basic school, she went back to live with her aunt until age 17 when she went to live with her mother, Shaki. At school, she was very ambitious, inquisitive, and commanding in her presence. She commanded the respect of her peers and also her teachers who would often challenge her to be her best self. Maya was not perfect, but she aimed to be flawless in whatever she did. In high school, she was a prefect and recounted that on one instance when the students got to her head, she got vexed and returned the badge which the teacher discouraged her out of, realizing her true potential. She said, the teacher said, Maya, you have your power and you're giving it away. She feared no one. In fact, in first form at the Waterford High School, a student who was constantly bullying her was made to meet the real Maya when he was introduced to a cheer as her weapon of defense. So from earlier on, they knew that Maya was not one to be trifled with. At school, she looked out for her best friend, ensuring that her name was accounted for in the register and vice versa. Her nature. Moya was an embodiment of excellence, determination, and strong will, the epitome of greatness, who was poised to become her greatest self. She wasn't perfect, but she aimed for perfection. She was respectful, humble, very quiet. The only way you would hear Maya's mouth is if she was forced to defend herself and you had to trouble her to hear her mouth. Maya was a feisty child. In fact, on one occasion she was heard telling a child some colorful words in the earshot of an adult after he had aggravated her spirit. Upon hearing this, the lady recounted the event to her father saying, Romy, I could not believe that those words would come out of Maya's mouth. To which he replied, yes man, a Maya that very feisty. Maya loved to dance, and as a child, she delighted in teaching Kai, her childhood friend, to do the latest dance videos that were in style. She loved doing dance videos with her friends, but would catch a fit if one of them would post one of her wind up videos to social media, remarking, Jesus Christ, Take it down now. Me and Tia go see it. She could have seen it already. Take it down. Take it down now. As a child, she was never enthused about her visits to the dentist. And in one such encounter, Maya rebelled so badly that they banned her from the dentist. Can you imagine how she must have hated those visits? In response to this, her mother contacted her aunt when she had sustained an injury requiring medical attention, saying, you come carry her down the cause are you alone she listened to willed. Maya had a stubborn disposition and if she made up her mind not to do something then God help you in trying to convince her. No amount of preaching, cursing or convincing could change her mind. If she said no and meant no then indeed it was an unwavering no. She would just block her mind and shut down in response ignoring all that was around her and no amount of words could coerce her out of that state. And as a result, she could never be bullied into doing something that she never wanted to do. In fact, instead of being led, she was always a natural leader who commanded the respect of her peers. In primary school, when one boy attempted to bully Maya, she stood her grounds in her own defense, stating, Auntie, we just kick, kick him up. This boy ended up becoming Maya's friend volunteering daily to carry her bag, to which her cousin Keisha responded, Maya famous now. So that means that if she famous, then me famous too. Maya make me famous, due to the respect that she had generated among her peers. 
Maya was fearless and remained unintimidated as she navigated life. When Shaki would send Maya to her grandfather, she would state, the man want me get up out of my bed six o'clock. And when me ask him where me I go, him say, just take a bus and come. So me no go, come in and go nowhere where me no know. In typical Maya fashion. Determined. Maya would fight tooth and nail to get what she wanted. In December, she went and saw the job opportunity at the airport, telling her aunt and her mom about it and asking what they thought. She said she had applied for the work and was very elated from the onset, from the training to studying to the actual commencement of her duties. She spent hours reading through material and preparing for her exams uh, during training and kept saying, me I go make you proud, a vision which unfortunately was cut short. Her teachers always saw potential in her. During high school, she would often complain when doing practicals, Auntie, I don't know what a woman has texted for me for you. Where she expect me to find so, so much something last minute? And her auntie would chuckle and say, Maya, it is because the teacher sees potential in you and wants the best for you while she keeps pushing you. Respectful and respected. Maya was socialized to address those who were senior to her as aunties and uncles, and hence, her greeting often mirrored this during her interaction with adults. She would often say, good morning, auntie, or good morning, uncle, and as part of her signature greeting, greet you with a warm hug, demonstrating her loving and compassionate nature. Maya commanded the respect of the youths in her community, Newland, and even at school, she commanded the respect of all who she interacted with. And it was not just limited to the young people around her. Maya had her big people friend them, who in their words, just respected the little girl, because the little girl just full of manners. Inquisitive. Maya had an inquisitive mind, was very observant, bearing vision akin to that of an eagle, and could hear from a mile away as if she stretched her ears when listening. She had a zeal for knowledge. If you ever engaged Maya in a discussion, you would agree with me that she was an astute young lady who was immersed in passion and had her sharp wits about her. She could hold her own in a conversation and never shied away from expounding on her points. One could not characterize her as shy. She had a curious mind and a craving for knowledge. Once she learned something of interest, she would probe it intensely, stopping at nothing until she became educated on the subject matter, finding out every intricate details. At school, she loved science and shared experiences of things she learned in science class practicals, of activities she participated in, in her foods practicals, and subjects that she enjoyed at school. She once shared how she had a good science teacher at school who made every student love the subject because he made it so intriguing, engaging, and interesting to learn. And subsequently, her school gained a prominence as a school of the sciences. Loving. Maya was a compassionate girl. She loved children, would often tease them to get a jovial reaction from them. Her little cousin Emma would often reply in her way of so-called tracing. Go away, Maya, you're pretty like. Maya, you're sexy, go away. And Maya would laugh and say, I saw somebody cause. You don't even know what I say. Maya, Maya's reach spanned an extended range. Her characteristics allowed her to touch the lives of many, near and far, young and old, of varying personalities. She loved her mother. Maya envisioned her mother as her best friend and desired for it to become a reality. She always articulated, I want my mother to be my best friend. This was her mantra. Every time you saw Maya and she and Chucky would have a falling out and you say, Maya, tell me what happened. She said, I always want my mother to be my best friend, you know, but she just a tell tell people my business. She desired to talk to her as a friend to share her thoughts encounters and personal experiences. She loved her mother in spite of the fact that, as with many parent-child relationships, they did not always see eye to eye. 
she was aware of her mother's sacrifices. She knew, we all know, that Shaki went above and beyond to make sure that Maya was comfortable. And on numerous nights, Shaki would not come off the road until she made Maya's lunch money to send to her aunt for Maya to go to school in comfort. On many nights, Shaki would sit up waiting for Maya and could not go to sleep until Maya came into the house. She was fond of her aunt, her role model. Maya had admired her aunt, Camille, and held her in high regard as a role model. Her aunt, though strict, loved her immensely and always worried about Maya. She tried to give her the best, and Maya loved her in return. As a child, she grew possessive of her aunt's affection and was never afraid to make this known, expressing on an occasion that her aunt, that her aunt should make the people them care for them pitney go to school, auntie, because me a year pitney, make them care for them one a pitney, and me a years. She often insisted that her auntie carried her to school and went into heated debates justifying the reason for her demand. And even when her aunt told her that it was too early for her to leave out that time, she argued that she was a brave girl. And it didn't matter because the security was always there and she don't mind sitting with the security because she not afraid. As she blossomed into a teenager and later a young adult, she would often call her aunt one side, telling her her little secrets or calling, saying, Auntie, I have something to tell you. Or, Auntie, we want to come where they come cool out my head for a few days, when anything was unsettling her spirit. Whatever her auntie said, she would not question it. She respected her. In fact, in one of her last posts on her WhatsApp status, she posted her, a picture of her referring to her as her Auntie Beer and expressing that she meant so much to her. Camille understood Maya like an open book. Being of a similar nature to Maya, she would call Maya out when she was not telling the truth or when she was being sly about a situation to which she would respond, all right, auntie, let me tell you how it go. And then she gave her the full version of the story. Oftentimes, Shaki would remark, come talk to your niece, yeah, when they were not seeing eye to eye and Camille would calmly coerce the truth out of Maya or calm her down when her hot-headedness kicked in, saying, all right, Maya, calm down now. Let it go now, no man. And she would relent and say, all right, auntie. She would sometimes say, yes, well, me not auntie, which she did and proudly so because she was fond of her from she was a little baby. She loved her family. Maya was fond of Jade, her cousin, the two of whom held each other's secrets tightly bound to their chests. They were close. They were loyal to each other and they loved each other. Maya was also close to her cousin Keisha. They grew up as sisters, and when she would speak of them, she would say that when there were children, we always fight, you know, but now watch that, because we would team up and beat you. They shared a bond which nobody could come between, a fact which Maya was proud of. She also loved her god bro, Raheem Thomas, affectionately called the brown man, if she needed someone to talk to, any paperwork to be done, anything to print, if she needed advice, a bus fare, she would turn to her god bro, who was always there for her. She would often screenshot their video call conversations and post them on social media, stating he was always there for her as a constant support system. She also enjoyed talking to her big sister as they shared a sisterly bond. Maya found her to be easy to talk to and someone who she could count on for guidance, especially when her mother got under her skin. Maya would sit down and vent to Antoinette about the situation, then lung up her mouth and say, may I go over Jade? She loved her brother, uh, brother Andre, as well, her bow-legged companion, who, although they couldn't agree, loved each other. Always quick to her defense and protective of his, his little sister, Andre would always speak up for Maya. She also loved her little brother, Jamie, whose pizza money she had to save on a Friday night, remarking that she can't buy anything else out of the money because if she break up the money, she can't go buy him pizza and he might wait for it. If one of her, in one of her last social media posts, she posted her mother, her father, her big brother, her baby brother, and her sister and her aunt, all the people who were significant in her life, stating candidly how she felt about each of them, as if she was clairvoyant, 
foreshadowing her exit from this world. Shaki, she noted, was her joy and her pain. Her dad, she said, was her joy, whom she loved. She also posted her sisters and brothers, expressing the love that she had for them, closing out in her signature style, a love and love alone. This was something that she would often do, featuring her favorite people with different captions, capturing the varied emotions she felt for them. And you could follow the different narratives on her status. She loved her father. Maya and Romy shared a special bond. He noted that every Friday, Maya would come check him for her $1,000 figure buy her chicken and chips. She looked forward to it, whether she had her own money or not, and she loved talking to and bonding with her father. Irrespective of whatever differences existed, Romy couldn't do no wrong in Maya's eyes, and she was ever sure and always quick to come to his defense. Her love for fashion. Maya had a passion for fashion, which was evident even in her tender years as a child. She loved to try on new shoes, and in one instance, when she was, when she was taken to buy her first pair of school shoes, Maya tried on a pair of high heel shoes that were several sizes up from her own size, stating, Auntie, it fit me, I eat me one, turning it from side to side and admiring its appearance on her feet. She had to be tricked into leaving it that day. She loved to dress up and take pictures. She would often take some fancy photos for the gram and loved to dress up, do her nails, and wear tights to show off her shape, which were complemented by her long, slender bow legs. Famous. Many of us never knew that Maya was famous. Maya had created a following for herself on Instagram, and it was only after her passing that her mom, relatives, and friends realized how popular Maya was. Many of her followers and fans reacted to her death, saying, yes, me noir, the little pretty girl on Instagram. Her impact was indeed far-reaching. Even people who had just met Maya on Instagram mourned her passing, stating that they only just met her a day ago but she was so nice. Her transition to the other side. On January 28, 2022, Maya met her untimely demise when her life was snatched away by a motor vehicle accident. But even in her last moments, the investigating officer of the accident used the following words. They said the little girl fight like a lion even regaining consciousness while she was being transported to the hospital for treatment. But the impact of the injuries sustained were too much for her body to withstand. Maya, saying that we will miss you does not even attempt to capture half of the emotions that we have felt and continue to feel since you left us. In fact, the words that could capture how we feel about your departure remain at bay. I hope you find a resting place. God always takes the best, and that was you. And even in death, I reflect on the life you live. I ponder fondly on the joy you'd give. No, no particle, no dust, nor wind can fly as high as your soul. Your life was like a floral arrangement with beauty at its core blooming daily only to fade and then it was no more on behalf of us all i say fly high sleep sweet rest up and say hi to the angels for us i'll now go right into the song Imagine being alone, a whole of meds by your own, then get a call by your phone, say you fi come now. You rush and leave everything, you know, no way fi begin, but you are braced for the worst, it never sound good, none at all. Cause on the other side, you hear I am a doctor, and him ask you, mommy, do you have a daughter? And when you hear him tell you, say, her name is Maya, the little girl where you did, they are road I wait for. Where it's so young and full of potential, we don't even know why this boy come kill you off. I just a part of the story me mention, cause even now, say me still can't tell you off. Right you now, me say me feel it to me heart. So young yet, you still can touch the world. Feel it to me heart. 
From your born you were a special little girl Feel it to me heart and soul For no say a something me can't control I hope you find a resting place God always take the best and that was you You gone already but you still a make an impact Although you're young your value system ever intact Me touch the gram and every fan I sing the same song your inspiration touching every generation. Them said to them you were a friend. The fact them not see you again. Them no know how this is so sharp. It's like a knife in a them heart. No matter where nobody say. It, it now go bring you back today. I don't me hear your daddy say. And that's the reason why. Feel it to me heart. So young yet you still can touch the world. Feel it to me heart. Maya from your barn you were a special little girl. Me feel it to me heart and soul. For no say something me can't control. But I hope you find a resting place. God always take the best. And that was you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Let's just have a 30 seconds of silence as we reflect on what we have heard about Maya. The Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. On behalf of the Portmore Church of God, let me offer condolences to the family, friends, and uh, other persons, well wishers who are here in this sad moment. Um, wherein the life of Moya has passed and now we are having the reflection and celebration of her life and we hope in some ways that some of the expressions that have been made and uh, you know with the songs words will help to encourage you and so the Church of God here in Portmore I believe um, Maya was christened here and um, her family part of this church you know she has relatives who are part of this church and so we share the grief and we share the pain and we extend our support and prayers to all just briefly because I recognize the time is a time of sadness um, at the passing of a young life wherein you are here grieving and are touched by the fact that at her age she has passed on and I want us to be mindful that life comes that way sometimes and we can't predict it we can't anticipate it we just have to ask God to give us strength when these things come and even before it comes that we make our lives ready and prepared for God because we know not the moment when God will come. So all the things that we are saying today, all the expressions we are making today will only find true meaning in a commitment that we will make from here to make sure that we live our lives to the pleasure of God and that we live with him and for him because we know not when our time will come and so we want to bear that in mind as we encourage the family I wanted us to read a word to encourage the family today 
and pray that in the midst of that encouragement you'll make a choice for God and the scripture I'll read is Matthew chapter 11 it says verses 27 to 29 all verses 28 to 29 come unto me all he that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your soul for my yoke is easy and my burden is light so grief abounds at this time and the Bible wants us to understand that there is a God who knows about this grief that is not silent or absent from this situation but that God knows even more than your friend knows more than anybody knows he knows that the life of Moya was a treasure to many and therefore the removal of this treasure is great pain yet still this scripture is fitting for us at this time where Christ is saying come unto me and so we recognize that invitation in the midst of the pain in the midst of the struggle there is a God there is a Christ that is calling you to come unto him and the way he says you should come it means that it is without prejudice anybody can come to him at any time you can come with your baggages Jesus is able to deal with them in fact you need not make any serious preparation all you have to do is to recognize his sovereignty his gift of mercy and grace and come to him there is no discrimination there's no favoritism Jesus calls every man every woman to come to him and so you don't have to be preparing yourself getting everything in order for you to come Christ says come as you are for in that call to come is both a command and a compassion a God who is saying to you based on the things that you will face in life based on the presence of sin and sin leads to death you will always have a sin you will always have death but there is a way of escape and that way of escape is through Jesus Christ Savior and Lord and we should not allow Moya's death to go for us to just come and say things and go to our normal life Moya's life it will, if it was really a prize to you if it was really a value and this life has gone away it must say something to you it must say something to you it is not about continuing life as usual it is about reflecting on what is happening and recognize that there is a God that is calling you to a new life a new mind new behavior new way of life and so I want us to recognize that and so we want to recognize that you can't say you are preparing you know there are certain things about about, about ladies ladies want to know that they sell off in the invitation they get they want to know that they sell off in terms of getting ready to go for the men years ago they used to use the term it changed now years ago the, the men has to be trash and ready today the term they use that why this one you're clean you know you know the, the, that kind of youthful term in other words people are making sure that they gather everything together before they go to an invitation jesus is saying to you you need no makeup you need no ready up you need nothing all you need to do is to come with your sin with your ways for there is a fountain filled with blood 
John from Emmanuel's vein and sinners plunge beneath the flood lose all their good disdain the greatest loss here is not the loss in terms of death the greatest loss here is a loss in terms of having no eternal life and so every one of us need to recognize the call of Jesus Christ to come to come consider what you need to leave and come consider that whatever you hold on to except God can't save you can't keep you can't give you peace can't give you joy and if they do give you it is temporary it is short-lived only in God we have eternal peace eternal joy eternal fulfillment and therefore every one of us must not just come to the funeral to see the last statements and expressions to Maya. We must examine our lives and recognize that Jesus has echoed and has thrown out a marvelous invitation of love and care in the midst of pain. He's saying to you, come to him because he knows Satan is a destroyer. He knows that more death will come. He knows that more sickness will come. He knows that more hardship will come. More disappointment and frustration will come. And yet he says, come to me who are the burden bearer, the helper, and the rescuer of your life. Christ is calling you. And there is no shortcut to that. There is no escape to that. We must come and stand before him. Because he has given us this invitation. That there is a place for you. There is a room for you. There is a discussion for you. There is a place in which you can find rest for your soul. The Bible also tells us that Jesus is saying, I will give you rest. You know, it's not only COVID alone tired out people. Sin tired out people. Rough thing and Satan are tired out a lot of people. But Jesus is saying, look here. Come to me. I will give you rest. When you come to me, I do not wreck your life. I do not frustrate you. I do not make you disappointed. I find and straighten your life. And I give you liberty and freedom. Come to me and I will give you rest. In this life, this tough life, where you don't know what will come to you. You are on the street, driving, and you don't know that the next second is your death. You are on the street or at school walking, and you don't know the next second is your death. Jesus is saying to you, you will never know. We will never know. The brightest of us will never know. Despite your wisdom, you will never know some things. And we can't know some things. And we must not beat ourselves to know everything. What we must do is to give our life to the one who knows everything. And the one who controls everything. And this is Jesus. I recommend him to you as the one who is your rescuer. I recommend him to you to reflect on this death of Maya. To see where you are. And come to Jesus Christ who is offering life and life more abundantly. This evening, wherever you go. Or this afternoon, wherever you go. Don't let it be the norm. Have a deep reflection as to where your life is going. Check yourself and recognize that the next step or the next one could be you. It could be me. But God is saying, before that time comes, come to him. Come to him and lay down your burden. Come to him and lay down the sins. Come to him and lay down everything that beset you. Because he's a rescuer, he's a deliverer, he will carry you through. I recommend him to you in this time of suffering and pain. Jesus is Lord and he wants to save you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Stand with me please. Praise God. We're going to ask Elder Heaven Mills to now come and do a prayer for the family.
even at this time. But while you have life and time, check ourselves and make ourselves right with God. Amen. Praise the, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. I guess most of the family relatives are outside. Praise God. Just raise your hands up. Let me see who the family relatives. Bless the Lord. I guess most of them are outside. But nevertheless, the Lord knows and the Lord sees everybody. So let us pray. Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal hope. Heavenly Father and our God, this afternoon we come before their presence, dear God. Lord, not of any goodness that we have done, dear God, but because of your love for us, dear Father, because, Lord, of your promises to us, dear God, and, Lord God, because we know, dear Father, that day is coming a day, dear Lord God. Lord Jesus, when you will come again, dear Father, Lord, as we gather this afternoon, dear God, and, oh God, when we look at Moya, dear Father, God, and, Lord God, you said in your word, in your word, said, dear Father, Teach us to number our days, dear Father God. And Lord God, many of this, these relatives, dear Father God, some have known you, dear Father, and has committed their lives to you. But God, there are some, dear Father, Lord God, who need, Lord Jesus, to look to you, dear Father. Lord God, this afternoon I pray, God, that Lord, as they mourn, dear Lord God, you would be their comforter, dear Father. You would help them to understand who you are, dear Father. You would draw them close to you, dear Lord. Lord, Lord Jesus, when they think, dear Father of life, dear God, Lord, there will come a time, dear Father, when death will come also. But God, I pray today, dear Lord God, that Lord, those, dear Father, who have not known you, dear Father, as Lord and Savior, that God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Lord, you touch them today, dear Father. Lord, you'll help them, Lord God, that they made it meditate upon your word dear God Lord even when they are outside dear father but God help them to know dear father remember the reason why they are here dear God and oh Lord Jesus to dear father God commit themselves unto you father we pray God for those this afternoon dear God who are here dear Lord inside the group and heard your word, dear God. Lord, may your word, dear Father, be, dear God, to them, dear Father, source of strength. May your word, dear Lord Jesus, reach their heart, Lord God. And Lord God, may they help others to reach you, dear Father. Bless them, dear God. Provide for them, dear God. Be their comfort, dear Father. Be their stay, dear Lord God. Lord, I pray for the mother, dear Father. I pray, God, that you would encourage her heart, dear God. Strengthen her, dear Father. Lord, I pray, God, that you direct her, dear Father, and lead her in the right way, dear Father God. Bless us today, dear God, as we go, dear Father, and as we journey, dear Father, to the cemetery, dear God. Lord, even there, dear Father, may they, Lord God, reflect upon your word, dear God. Bless us, dear Father God, and make the way clear, dear God, as we say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. You may be seated for some instructions, and then we do the closing song and we get out. So let's remain in respect, in respect for Maya. Just in respect, please. All right. Um, so we will be traveling to Portmore to the roundabout here, then to South Bar roundabout, right up to the Newland stoplight. Then we'll take right, travel along Newlands Road, up to the stoplight, take left to the KFC, and then we go right across the I-95, right across, and then we end up going up to Spanish Town. So, so tomorrow, up to the stoplight, Newlands Road, take right on Newlands Road, Straight out to the stoplight, to the gas station, take left and pass KFC, go right up to that stoplight and go right across. You need no other instructions from there. 
that leads you right on to Dove Plan. Stand with me then as we do the recessional. I'm going to ask the Paul Bearers to come now and we will leave the platform in this order. The, the platform parties who are the singing team will continue to sing while the officiating party will lead. Then we have the, the, the casket. Th then we have the family members behind the casket and everybody else comes after. Right? So we do the father. That's a word of prayer before we move. Father, thank you for today. Thank you, O oh Lord, that you have allowed us to reflect on our lives, make expressions as it relates to the passing of this life. We pray, God, that that which you have heard from all the sources will make for a better response to you, and especially from your word, we'll consider the things we need of you and recognize that you have called us to rest. Guide us as we shall go to the committal. Bless the family and friends who will not be there. But we trust you for your own leading. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Blessed Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing, then the platform party will lead off, and then um, the casket. In that order, please, just clear the aisle, please. Can we clear the aisle?
Oh, goodness. Praise the Lord, come to Jesus.